Hey, there we go. Welcome into the Ben Maynard podcast. No, I take that back. Welcome into the Ben Maynard program. There we go. Hey, and we're not editing any of this stuff out. Sorry. Uh, if you even bothered to watch the first show, uh, this is show number two. If you even bothered to watch the first one, you know that we go warts and all on this. It doesn't matter how it goes. Uh, I leave it in. I leave it in, and uh, that's that's the way I post the show. So, uh, yeah, trying a little a little something here. Still working with things. If you you can see in the background here, uh, studio is still under construction. It's going to be under construction for a little bit. Uh, there's a lot that has to be done, but I want to get this show out to you. Um, as I as I had mentioned in the first show, it's something I've always wanted to do. I'm not going to go ahead go through the whole story, but um, while I can do this, I'm going to do this uh, just like it is. You'll see the progress made as progress is made, and uh, and we're going to go through this together. Uh, just as we should. Uh, we're friends. We're friends. You and I, we're friends. So uh, that being said, <laughs> this is this is our show. We're going through this all together. So I appreciate uh, appreciate you tuning in and I appreciate your patience. I know sometimes uh, you you might see other videos posted. Uh, I don't, you know whether they're shows or, or not, but you see stuff like this in the background. I know I do, and I think. Why are they leaving that stuff in the in the in the picture? Why don't they clean things up a little bit? Well, there's a reason behind that, and uh, I want you to all go through the process with me. So that's that's just how I see it, and I, I know the glare on the glasses can be a little bit uh, maybe distracting. I'm going to work on that too. <laughs> work on trying to get some anti glare glasses. You know, I really don't need them. I don't wear glasses on a regular basis, but I I certainly need them to read. And um, uh, if I can get away without them, I certainly will, just so that you don't have to deal with the glare and I don't have to deal with the glare because it's just as distracting to me as it is to you. So anyway, so welcome into the program. Uh, show number two, a brief re recap on, on the last show, if you watched it. It was a train wreck. It really was. And I admit it. And I'm okay with that. I'm perfectly okay with that. Um, it is what it is. And I, I don't mind it. But I had fun doing it. I had a good time. Um, it certainly was very, very far from perfect. But I, I want to post these shows so that... Um, we can go through this process together. So maybe you can see what a what a uh, what a mess I am to start. And as I get better at this, uh, as as long as you stick with me, if I, as long uh, as I get better at this, then um, you'll see that progress as well. So uh, this not being so much a test show like the first one was. Um, I'm, I'm actually not going to really wing it. I actually have an outline today. So <laughs> thumbs up for me, huh? <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I just posted that first show. Um, I posted it a few hours ago. And uh, and I watched it again. And there was, uh, wow, there were some moments. And I was like, really? You know, speed it up. You know, don't, don't, uh, don't stutter so much. Don't do this. Don't do that. But it's just the way it is, and I'll get better and better. Um, as long as you like the content, that's really uh, that's all that matters at this point, and we're going to go from there. So today's show, no guest. It's just you and I again, and um, I'm going to bring in uh, uh, a couple of artists, and I shouldn't say bring in. I'm going to discuss a couple of music artists that, um, that I really like, uh, I, very popular. They're not, uh, you know, they're... they're I would consider to be, you know, very mainstream, at least one of the artists is. So uh, I, I just want to discuss a little bit um, and we'll go through them. I, 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 I'll i be honest with you. The second one uh, that I'll bring up, I touched on a little bit in the first show. So I'm going to expand on that a little uh, even more so. So if uh, you watch that first show and you saw it, it 
any of it and it seems that I'm repeating myself, then you know why. So we'll, let's just kick this thing off uh, to start. I'm going to try not to play any music. I know that first, <laughs> I didn't have everything dialed in. I didn't realize with my headphones on, I couldn't hear the music as well. So it sounded a lot lower in volume to me than when it came off. Um, like I said, that's just the way it's going to be. And you're going to laugh at it. You're going to cuss at it. You're going to make nasty comments about it, whatever it is, you know, uh, let's just have some fun. Okay. Cause we're friends, right? We're friends, you and me. So, uh, anyway, so the first artist I want to, I want to bring to your attention today is this band right here. Let's go. Yeah. Foreigner. I'm sure everybody is familiar with Foreigner. Everybody's heard of Foreigner. Everybody's heard of that band. And if you're not big into Foreigner, you certainly know the big hits, the big songs. And um, there's not a lot can be said about Foreigner that hasn't been said. It's a it's a great band. Been around. Uh, they released their first their first album, their self titled release in 1978, and it really changed rock music. It really did at that time. Um, there was a lot of disco out on the radio a lot more geared towards adult contemporary as well. And um, so when it came to that top 40, uh, when Foreigner hit with the, the self-titled album in 78, that just changed everything. First song they released was Feels Like the First Time. And it really changed, uh, it really changed everything in, in the rock space. It really did. Honest. Uh, I, I know there's some other bands out there and you're going to, you're either going to, Give me thumbs up, thumbs down. You're going to leave positive or negative comments about it. If you do, you're going to send me nasty emails or whatever it might be. And you're going to give me your opinion. And that's okay. That's okay. Everybody's got an opinion. You're entitled to it. But uh, but really, Foreigner, they they changed uh, they changed music. They changed a lot of it, uh, a, a lot of the direction of it. Got it back to a rock space uh, as far as um, hit radio, top 40 radio. Got it back to a rock space from the... Um, the disco that had been going on for the couple of years prior to that. So anyway, as uh, you may or may not be aware, Foreigner's been out on their farewell tour. They're calling it after, uh, I guess, 45 years. There's, they say they're calling it a career. Um, and if anybody is aware, Mick Jones is the only founding member of the band left. And that happened, uh, that happened in... 2004, Mick decided to take the band in a different direction and parted ways with Lou Graham, one of the absolute greatest rock voices in history. So, but but at that time, admittedly so, Lou was having uh, a, uh, a tough time of it. He had come off of having a brain tumor back in the late 90s. He had it removed and it really affected his voice. He was on steroids, admittedly. He's he's discussed this in interviews previous to this. And he had uh, he had a lot of issue due to the meds that he was on, the steroids that that had that uh, he was prescribed uh, to combat his post-surgery uh, recovery or uh, to combat the tumor and help him in his post-surgery recovery. So, and, and in that, he he ballooned up. I think I heard him at one time. He said he ballooned up to about 240 pounds. Now, if anybody knows, Lou Graham is not a big man. I want to say Lou Graham is probably about 5'6", five, 5'7". Five, I've never stood shoulder to shoulder with him, so I couldn't tell you exactly. But I have seen the band live enough, and I've been close enough to the stage to where, you know, I thought, well, he's a pretty short guy. But... You know, that kind of frame, 240 pounds, it's not really working for him. And that really, uh, he really struggled mightily with his voice. If anybody had seen him in the uh, in the early part of, of the, uh, the 2000s, 2000, 2001, 2002, I think the last time I had seen Foreigner with Lou Graham might have been 02. So he was he was struggling. 
a lot. And so Mick Jones decided to make a change in the band in 2004, parted ways with Lou Graham and uh, actually parted ways with everybody in the band except for himself. Brought in Kelly Hansen on lead vocals. Kelly Hansen was formerly of Hurricane in the late 80s. Some of you are probably very familiar with that band. Honestly, I'm not. I, I know one or two songs, but I was not familiar with, with Hurricane. But Kelly's a fine singer. Kelly is a fine singer. He really does a great job at, at honoring the music of Foreigner and honoring those songs that Lou Graham and Mick Jones wrote during you know the their heyday late 70s 80s all through the 80s they had they did have one uh, they had one release in the in the 90s and kelly kelly does a, a great job at honoring that and i i think that uh, it took him a little bit to 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 come into his own as far as taking the lead the lead role in that band uh, being center stage, being the front man, the face of the band, but he's done a wonderful job and he doesn't try to be Lou Graham. He tries to be Kelly Hansen singing Lou Graham. And he does a great job. The one thing I could tell you about Foreigner is to my ear. And I told you before, I'm not a musician. I can't play a note, but I know what sounds good. I know what sounds like it's in the proper key and uh and all that and i can tell you that to my ear foreigner plays in the same key or the original key that you know these songs are written in so um you know that being said the the the, the band now on their on their farewell tour the uh the lineup has been pretty consistent um the last few years um they had gone through some changes when Lou, I mean, when, uh, pardon me, when, when Mick uh, took full ownership of the band and decided to move on. And at first uh, he had, you know, obviously Kelly Hansen on vocals, Jeff Pilson, who is still in the band to this day is really the musical director. And I think, I think between him and Kelly, they're the driving force behind this band. Um, Michael Blue uh, Bluestein or Bluestein on uh, he's on he's on keyboards and a little percussion. Um, initially, they had Jason Bonham, uh, yes, of course, son of John Bonham, on drums, and he was there for for a uh, for a few years, and then he was replaced uh, by Brian Tishy. Everybody, uh, you remember Brian Tishy? You know Brian Tishy? Just you know, there's nothing you can't say about Brian Tishy that 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 he doesn't deserve is, is in in the way of positive comments. He's a great drummer, great drummer, and he's been in so many bands. He, Billy Idol, a Foreigner, of course, um, uh, the Dead Daisies. I think he's in the Dead Daisies now, uh, and and a few others. But um, so Brian Tishy was there for he had a stint for a few years. Oh, Brian was also in White Snake. That's right. He was in White Snake, so um, he uh, he was replaced. Uh, the current drummer is um, oh geez, who's the current drummer now? It's off the top of my head. Oh yes, uh, Chris Frazier. Chris Frazier on on drums. Uh, like I said, he's been there for a few years after the revolving door buying the kit. But um, what the band has done because when Foreigner first came out, it was a five five uh, or six guys in the band. Uh, Lou Graham on lead vocals, and then they filled out uh, filled out the band with the musicians: uh, Mick Jones, guitars, keyboards, or synthesizers. You had um, Ed Gagliardi. You had um, uh, gosh, Ian McDonald. You had um, who was it? Den Dennis Wright or Den is that it on drums? I'm trying to think. Sorry, it's just. I thought I was a little more prepared for this, but I didn't look at the original lineup of Foreigner. So I'm just trying to go off the top of my head. So I apologize for that. But um, but now they have filled out the band with their seven members, if you count Mick. 
Um, and I'll be honest with you, Mick doesn't play with the band a lot. If you haven't seen Foreigner, then uh, just be aware that Mick does not play. He he rarely shows up to a show. So Mick is almost, he's, now he is, if you see publications, you see press, uh, that type of stuff, Mick is always, you know, right in the forefront of uh, the uh, the shots, the, the photographs of the band. But he is not, he's not, really, he's almost not a touring member of the band. He rarely makes an appearance. And that's been, it's been that way for probably nearly 10 years. And Mick's, you know, he's the oldest member of the band. I think if uh, memory serves I me, mean, he's pushing 80 years old. So, and he's had, he's had a lot of health issues uh, in the past 10 years. So that does limit him uh, from, from touring or making appearances. And usually when he does, he'll come out and he'll play encores, that type of thing. So, I mean, it's a little, it's a little upsetting and a lot of people will make um, comments as, you know, Foreigner is now a tribute band. They're really not you know, the band. And I can understand that. I, I, I can, I sympathize with that opinion. Um, I'm not sure if I share it or not. I kind of equate it to, maybe it's a bad analogy, but for those of us who like sports, the teams are always changing, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever football team, baseball team, basketball team that you cheer for those players, you know, they change every couple of years. So uh, that's kind of the way I view bands at times, but we still have those bands that we hold on to that we, we, We've been there. We feel like we've been there from day one. And I'm a 58 year old guy, so you know I've, I've been around a little bit, and and so I understand that mentality. And and like I said, maybe the sports team is a bad analogy, but but uh, they change all the time. The names of the teams don't change, but the players do. And uh, I know when it comes to bands, it's a little. It can be a little bit different. There aren't many bands current that have been around for any measure of time 20 years plus 25 years even i mean going back 50 years that are all original members and have you know from from day one to now and uh have rarely had a personnel change but uh and foreigner has actually quite a few personnel changes over the years uh, even going back to the beginning, you know, they only had their original lineup for the first two first two albums, and then uh, Mick Jones because he really um, he really was the, um, for lack of a better term, the leader of the band. He really ran that. Um, he made changes going into their third album, and they stayed with those personnel changes for I want to say the following four. Four record uh, four records that they had put out, but getting back to the uh, the farewell tour. So Foreigner is currently out on their their farewell tour. They've uh, they've dubbed it that, and I don't know how you feel about it, but uh, I don't know how you feel about farewell tours in general. I um, it's generally like if a band says that they're on a farewell tour. Um, it's hard to believe it. It's really hard to believe these days. So many bands have said, oh, we're calling it quits. It's our farewell uh, farewell tour. Um, we're done. So and they call it different things. It's not always a farewell tour. But when they say farewell, it's generally not a farewell. And I was I was excited about this this farewell tour from Foreigner. They only played one show in uh, in my area and it was uh, this past august they played in uh, in irvine at the five points amphitheater and it's a nice venue it took the place of the legendary uh, irvine meadows which that place was ugh, it's just such a great place to see a show it really really was uh, but but now there are condominiums on that property um, 
But the uh, Five Points Amphitheater is a great place to see a show also. Uh, it's a nice venue, uh, 12,000, 12,500, 13,000-seater. Um, so they do a nice job in trying to recreate that, that vibe. Um, so that's, that was the only show that Foreigner was playing in my market. So I had to make sure I went to see it because, you know, Foreigner never said, oh, this is a farewell tour, but I will say, or they never said farewell before, but I will say this in an interview back in 2016 on Trunk Nation, I'm going to credit you, Eddie Trunk, because you are the man, um, Eddie had a, Eddie did an interview. He conducted an interview with Mick and he did put it on him. Eddie's talked about this a lot of times. And if you're a listener of Eddie Trunk, then, you know, I don't need to go in and, and rehash any of that, but he put it on, on Mick at the time. He, he had mentioned the health issues that Mick had had in the past and the fact that he wasn't for, he wasn't really a, a full touring musician in the band. So he had asked him, what happens when you, Mick, decide you're done with it? No more touring. You're over it. And Mick had said, when I'm done, Foreigner is done. So I always held that in my head. And um, so when this tour came around, I thought, okay, I've got to see him. And I knew Mick had been in and out on shows. But I thought, okay, well, it's the farewell tour. Mick has to be there. He's got to show up. And uh, went to the went to the show. And I'll tell you, it was a great show. Great show. That's the one thing uh, I'll tell you. Foreigner, like I said, they to my ear, they still play in the original key. They do a fabulous job. There was great production. It wasn't a ton of production, but it was a great light show. Great stage production. And uh, the musicians now currently in the band do a wonderful job. They just, I mean, they are hitting on, on, on all cylinders. And so I don't have any complaints about the show itself. But it's the farewell tour and Mick didn't show up. And I was, I was, I have to say I was, I was disappointed in that. And then... Um, about a week after that show and, and the tour, the, the farewell tour is supposed to end next month. I believe it's somewhere around the 6th of November. So about a week after the show, I hear this announcement, Foreigners adding more shows. They're doing a residency in Las Vegas. And I don't remember where it is. I looked it up, but I don't remember. And that's not important. But even prior to the residency, they've got some, I want to say it's five or six shows before getting into, into Vegas. And their residency is two parts. They play uh, several dates, six or eight, 10 dates in March of next year, 2024. And then they come back in October and finish up. And I have a problem with that because you told me this is a farewell tour and you told me this was it. And as a matter of fact, at the show, Kelly Hansen on stage took, took the, to the front of the stage and just poured it out to everybody. You know, this is it. We're done. Blah, blah, blah. It's been a great run. So on and so on. All, all the, all the things you want uh, that you should be hearing from an artist that says that this is it. We're going out. This is our goodbye. And then, like I said, a week later, I'm hearing more shows. And I thought, son of a gun, you know, nobody ever says goodbye. And uh, I won't get into all the other bands that, that do the same thing. But for some reason, I just thought, okay, no, nope, this, this is it. Foreigner is not going down this road. And sure enough, they did. I don't know. I, I'll, I'll stop with that rant there. But, but I just wanted to... Uh, Wanted to share that and, you know, get your thoughts, get your thoughts, leave, leave comments, uh, after, after the video or after the show, um, you can comment here. You can leave me an email. The email address is at the bottom of the screen. 
That's my personal email. I'm just letting you know, this is how primitive everything is. I'm telling you, maybe I'll get a show email moving forward or later on down the line. But right now, that's my personal email. <laughs> so don't fill it up with garbage, okay? But comment all you want if, if you'd like. Um, <laughs> so, uh, all right. So enough with uh, enough with Foreigner. The next uh, next artist I want to bring in to the fold here into the discussion is um, is Steve and Jerry. Steve and Jerry, uh, formerly of Journey, former lead singer, uh, did his time in the band. Um, really, he started out in '97 with the band, and he went to '06. Um, Everybody knows, I shouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people know he came, he was a former lead singer of a band called Tall Stories. I'm not very familiar with their music at all, so I really can't comment on it. Um, but but at the time that uh, he had sent a tape in to, to Neil Sean, and I believe Jonathan Kane, it could have just been Neil, but he sent in a tape. He was, uh, he was working construction for The Gap. Yeah, the clothing store, the clothing chain, the Gap, and um, they heard his tape, got the call, didn't believe it was them. I think he even hung up the phone when somebody had said uh, when somebody identified themselves, saying who they were. But but nonetheless, it worked out for him. I uh, think his first recording with the band was uh, "Remember Me" from the soundtrack uh, from uh, soundtrack to the movie Armageddon. That's a really, really good song. And that is that song does not get the recognition it deserves. That is such a fabulous song. It's such a journey song. It, it you know, any anybody in Journey could have any of the lead singers could have sang that song. It is a journey song through and through. And just doesn't get the recognition that it should. The band doesn't play it, or I shouldn't say doesn't, but they rarely play it. I've seen the band actually play that song two times. So, um, and that's, you know, been since 1997. But um, but what, what I wanted to do was, was share a little bit about Steve and Jerry and the albums that he created with Journey, that he recorded great Great music. If you are unfamiliar with the Steve A. Jerry version of Journey, you really need to check it out. It is so worth your time. And it, it is Journey. As long as look, as as long as Neil Sean, as long as Jonathan Kane is in that band, no matter what their differences are at this at this point point in time uh the direction or the music the music direction of that band will always be the same and the, the material that they that they recorded with steve and jerry like i said it, it really ranks up there with anything that was previously done with steve perry and that is not a knock on that stuff from the past that just is to say that this band continues to put out quality music. At least they were back at the turn of the century. Quality music, great stuff. And so I just wanted to wanted to show you this. This was the first release. I'm trying to get the glare off of the computer here, but or off of the, the CD case. But that's Journey Arrival. Okay. Oh, that's a little bit better right there. That was the first release with Steve and Jerry. Uh, I believe it came out in 2000, and uh, I talked a little bit about it last show. But what I what I liked about this was not only did it did it stay true, it was it was a little bit more of a current sound of Journey or a little current direction. But you knew it was Journey when you heard it. You knew uh, by the tunes. Obviously, you knew by Steve and Jerry's voice. Not that he sounded exactly like Steve Perry, but he's right in that vein. Tremendous. But being the new guy in the band, he even he even co-wrote several of the tunes. 
So that's always good you, because I think as a, as a member of a band, you want to feel at least a new member of the band and you're singing those songs. You want to feel a part of it as well. You want to be out there writing songs too. So he did. He contributed uh, to some of the songwriting and it's just great stuff. Great, great stuff. There's, there's, I think, really, I think there's stuff on there from every era of Journey. Um, going back to the... Uh, the early Steve Perry years when you had a lot of that Greg Raleigh songwriting influence as well. So I think there's a lot of that on there. There's some bluesy stuff. There's a, there's, there's one blues track on there. Um, uh, living to do. And it's, uh, it's a great, it's a great song. Steve and Jerry's vocals are amazing on it. Um, so if you haven't checked it out, and it's now what 23 years old check it out you can get it wherever you can get music you know it, you can stream it you can buy it whatever it is check it out okay so the next one that uh, in the in the line of the Steve and Jerry releases is Red 13 there it is right there let's get that glare off get it over here all right yeah Red 13 it's a uh, it's a five song it's really a four song EP. I, I call it five songs because there's an introduction uh, to the first tune uh, called Red 13. And it's about a two minute instrumental. Very, um, very progressive. Very progressive. But it, it but it leads right into there's there's no interruption. There's no break between that and the uh, the, uh, the first track State of Grace. So that's why I, you know, it's however you really want to look at it, five songs, four songs, whatever, it really doesn't matter. But this is, in my estimation, the heaviest journey of the entire catalog. This is the heaviest. The um, the song State of Grace, for one, and the uh, song after that, um, The Time. Great, great song. I remember seeing Journey in 2002 when this CD, when 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 this was released, and this was this wasn't sold. Um, yeah, I mean, you can buy it online, but it was this was sold at their shows. That that tour, I'm gonna cover up my face here. This was sold at their shows um, during that tour. I don't remember what they called the tour. They didn't call it Red Thirteen. But and it was it, they it was recorded basically as a thank you to the fans for staying with them, sticking with them through, you know, through the there were the lean years uh, in the in the early '90s. There were you know where they had the reunion and uh, with Steve Perry in '96, and that was supposed to lead to a reunion tour. It didn't happen, and there was just the band was in flux. And this was the band's thank you to the fans for sticking by them. Um, it's unfortunate that you can't find it, um, on Amazon music or, or iTunes, but that's the way it is. I, I, I wish you could, because even though I do listen to my CDs, I don't have a CD player in my vehicle any longer. And, um, so the only way I can do it is to listen at home. Well, I don't think my wife would appreciate that since she works from home. And I can't really just crank up the stereo and say, deal with it. But nonetheless, um, Great CD. So if you can if you can get it, if you can find it on uh, you know Amazon or wherever it is that you buy music, buy physical music, then then get it. I, I really strongly encourage you. It's just dynamite. Um, and then the the third release, third journey release was Generations. This one was also it was commercially released, but it was also sold at the Journey shows. Um, in that year, that was, that was 2005. They sold it, uh, at their, you know, merch stands at the shows. Um, it's another good record. I think the one, the one downside for me personally is that everybody in the band gets a, gets at least one song. Uh, and so, well, I, I don't think Neil does. And I'll be honest with you. I haven't, I haven't listened to this a lot. I have not. Certainly of the Steve, uh, Jerry uh, releases red 13 and arrival. I'm all over it. I'm all over them. Uh, generations, not as much. So maybe I should take my own advice and go check it out. And maybe I will now. 
So, um, yeah, it, it, and I think it, that one, but that one also is a little bit long. Uh, I think it's got 14, 14 tracks on it. And I know a lot of bands do that these days. Uh, they're just full of, you know, uh, material and then squat and record it and put it out there on their, on their releases. And there's a positive and a negative to it as fans. We like to see all that material, but sometimes, um, some of it really doesn't, I don't know, doesn't make the cut or shouldn't make the cut anyway. But I think the band is also, you know, bands see it as if we give them more material, they're more likely to, you know, jump on it, whether it's pre-order it or buy it after it's released, whatever it might be. Okay, so moving along, um, speaking of Steve and Jerry, well, what has he done since, since he left the band? He has put out some singles uh, digitally. I was actually unaware of this until recently. Um, I had just gone through and tried to uh, do some research on Steve and Jerry because I, I really, really do like him. I love his voice. And I, I just think that he comes off as just a genuine person um, and certainly some who, someone who's uh, appreciated what has come to him in the past and uh, is, is really um, somebody for the fans. He's, so, so what has he done? He, like I said, he put out some singles, probably, gosh, in my research, I found 10 songs that he wrote played a lot of the instruments on himself. I had no idea he was um he was a, a he was a musician. I, I I knew he played bass guitar. I knew he'd actually come out on stage with Journey. I've seen a time or two he'd actually played bass. But um I didn't realize he was that accomplished when I started looking at these song credits and uh so he was playing all the instruments, singing all the vocals the lead vocal tracks, the background vocals, all this kind of stuff. And some really, really good stuff in there too. So if you if you go on whatever streaming service you listen to music on, go on and check it out. Good stuff. Really, really good stuff. But my point of this all is earlier this year, this was released. Steve and Jerry, Seven Ways Till Sunday. His first solo album. It just came out early. I want to say it was May. May of this year, um, 11 tracks. So it's not a lot of, you know, not, not overload. I think it's, uh, I think when you get into uh, 10, 11, 12 songs on an album, I think you're right in there. Um, what I'll say about this is it took me a couple of listens. Um, and I, when I, when I put on, when I put on a, 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 a CD, uh, a new one. I I listened to it front to back, um, just like the way we used to listen to albums when we were kids. And I put this on and I listened to it. And the lead track is called Magic, and it is a good song. It's a really good way to start off the album. It's got some pop sensibilities to it, but it's good. It really is good. The second song is Never Far From Home. And if anybody likes Train, the band Train, Patrick Moynihan, you know, the band Train, this is right in line with that. I, I When I first heard the song, I thought that was the first thing that came into my mind was Train. This sounds like a Train song. And uh, this particular song was, was co-written. All the songs, by the way, all the songs on this, all 11 songs are written by Steve and Jerry. He, 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 he co-writes with a few people, but uh, a few of his band members, but I'll tell you two of the songs, two of the tracks, one of them is the, the never far from home. He co-wrote with Jonathan Kane. So uh, I thought that was, I thought that was interesting. Um, I'm not going to go through every song and rate it or anything like that, but you know, there's a, there's a, a ballad on here, um, which you would expect from somebody like Steve and Jerry. Um, there's, uh, I'll tell you this right now without going through the rest of the tunes, I will tell you this, what well, my favorite songs on this absolutely favorites, and I'll play them over and over and over and over again. I just will. My favorite songs on this album are the last three. And, 
it they're they're the what is it number track number nine beautiful i i, I can't i can't, just can't even describe that song you have to you have to pick this up if you haven't. You really do. It's a fabulous album. And if you like Journey, you really are going to like this because it's the sound of it is very similar to the Arrival album. I, it, look, I'm not going to say, oh, it's Arrival Part 2. No. But there are a lot of similarities in the songs, uh, just their structure, their sound. but um beautiful is a, just a great song great lyrics great lyrics i will say through and through that's the one thing i do appreciate i'm a lyric guy i love lyrics and lyrically the songs are so strong on this album so uh so song number nine beautiful fabulous song song number 10 desert moon was a co-write with Neil Sean. When you hear the guitars, you're going to say, oh, you're going to wonder if Neil is actually playing on that song. Well, he doesn't, but you're going to think that he does. And that's another reason why I think you'll, you'll, you'll feel like this is um, journey adjacent almost or arrival adjacent. Uh, just because the guitar sounds in this are very, very similar to that of Neil Sean. And he has a signature sound, definitely has a signature sound. Uh, Steve Perry, I think, used to recreate that sound, especially on his uh, uh, For the Love of Strange Medicine solo album. I thought the guitars on that, it was, you, could, you could have said that Neil Sean was uh, playing on that album, and I would have believed you. But uh, getting back to this, uh, Desert Moon, track number 10, the co-write with Neil Sean, great song. Like I said, great lyrics, great lyrics. And then number 11, the final track in the beginning, or I'm sorry, from, from the beginning. Uh, another great way to end um, the album. Uh, I equate it, and this is kind of why I go back and I say this could be, this could be journey adjacent, the arrival adjacent, is that the, the final track on, um, on the arrival album is called We Will Meet Again. And it's just one of those songs, it, it's, I don't know, the way it hits me, it feels like that song could play on forever and ever and ever. And um, the final track on Seven Ways to Sunday in the beginning is that same way. I get that same feeling that the song could just go on and on and on and on. And I'd be okay with that. Um, so, um, yeah, that's... That's what Steve uh, Steve and Jerry is up to. Almost called him Steve Perry. Sorry about that, Steve. And I'm going to try. I'm going to reach out. I am going to reach out to him and see if I can get him on the on the show. Um, I, I don't want it to be so primitive like it is now. I want to get better at this before I start bringing in some uh, start reaching out to people and bringing in some some guests. But uh, but yeah, this is a fabulous fabulous album and. Uh, if you are an admirer of Journey, if you're an admirer of Steve and Jerry, and you want to know what he's up to and what he's been doing, this is what he's been doing. Uh, there, I, I look. There's really no tours announced, not yet. I'm certainly hoping soon, uh, and I'm hoping that uh, that when he does get out on the road, that he'll uh, he'll come to a market near me. Anyway, uh, I'd really like to see him. Uh, fabulous. Fabulous singer. The one thing I can say is we all know as Journey fans that Steve struggled mightily in the last year to year and a half. And I'll tell you, I saw Journey with Steve Ajeri many times and he blew me away. But um, some of the best Journey shows I ever saw, and I'm going back to when I, I saw Journey with Steve Perry as well. Some of my best Journey shows were with Steve Ajeri and a couple of my worst shows were with Steve and Jerry. So that's just, uh, that's just uh, what, what the, what, you know, what the road did to him in trying to sing that Steve Perry material. It just, it, you know, it's just absolutely, I said it before, I don't want to keep repeating myself, but it just does a number on you. And uh, especially the way journey tours journeys out there, you know, five, six months out of the year and they're playing three, four, five shows a, uh, a week. 
And trying to sing Steve Perry, not good, not easy at all, especially when you're doing it for a length of time, uh, you know, that that length of time. But what I can say about about his new CD, about Steve's new CD, is that he sounds tremendous. And I know anybody can sound great in the studio. But I listened to his voice and he's singing like Steve a Jerry. He's not singing like Steve Perry, which is when he sang the Journey stuff, he he had to, or when he sang the Steve Perry stuff, he had to. He had to come really close to that. And he did for a while. But when he when he would sing the journey material that he recorded, it always sounded good because he was singing in his voice, even though it still had that journey sound, or you could say even close to that Steve Perry sound, okay? But it was his voice, and he was singing it the way he could manage it. And that's what you get with Seven Ways to Sunday. You get that Steve and Jerry. And my hope for him is that when he does do shows, that he will lean on his material a lot more than he leans on any of the journey stuff, especially the stuff that he's not involved in. So I know that people want to hear it because he's a former lead singer of journey, but lean towards his material and not the Steve Perry stuff. That's just my opinion, but uh, I certainly don't think he'd get in vocal trouble if he did it that way, but who am I? <laughs> just me. So anyway, uh, with that, we'll leave you. We'll leave you with that. We'll call it a show. Uh, don't forget, please, please, if you like it, maybe even if you don't like this, subscribe to the subscribe to the channel. Okay, I could use a little bit of help. I'm not trying to make money. I'm trying not trying to get paid. I don't think I'm ever going to be anything like Joe Rogan. That's not what I'm what I'm trying to do here. Okay, he's the king of it all, and I'm not even thinking about that. All I just want to see are people subscribe to the channel. And if you have something nice to say, go ahead and say it. If you have a criticism, that's all right, too. Let's just be kind about it. I, I mean, I'm pretty thick-skinned, and, and I know I know my faults here, all right? So there we go. Anyways, that's it for this show, and uh, we'll see you again next time. And I appreciate you being here. Uh, come back and see us again on the Ben Maynard program. Bye now.